As you've seen a few other creators make videos about recently, this is my response to Daniel Braun's challenge to us other credit card creators, where I'll be building my ideal credit card setup based on cards that I actually don't have yet. Considering I'm so early on in my credit card journey in the grand scheme of things, there were really like an infinite amount of ways I could have gone about this. But at the end of the day, I landed on obviously this setup here today. And what might surprise you is that all of the cards in this setup actually come from my favorite lender, that of course being Chase. You may be wondering what other cards I even want from Chase considering I already have like four of them at this point. And if that's you, you're in for a treat because honestly, I think Chase has a lot of really good credit cards that we don't always even talk about on our channel. So I'm excited for this one. Y'all know at this point that I do boast Chase as my favorite lender pretty unashamedly because honestly, they just give me a ton of value for my personal situation. And if you take away anything from this video, right off the bat, I just wanna say that don't let others kind of dictate what credit cards you add to your setup because even though you'll see credit cards in this video that you'd be like, nah, I'm never going to ever get one of those. That's completely fine. And that's the whole point of the credit card game is to build it according to your needs. So with that being said, I want to break this video down into basically just five main parts, one part for each card that I'll be talking about in this video. And also final note, before I dive into card number one, like I said, these are all chase cards. So the chase 524 rule is going to be really instrumental in, you know, slowing me down in applications for these cards. So this is not just a hit it and quit it approach. This is definitely a long-term strategy that I'm talking about here today. Now let's go ahead and kick it off with card number one, which honestly is the most boring card out of the bunch. So I wanted to get it out of the way first, but it is also essential to the setup. And that card's going to be the Chase Inc. Unlimited. This card is extremely simple and it would be a part of this setup for a couple of main reasons. For one, the sign up bonus on this card is usually really good. And right now it's sitting at 75,000 points after spending $6,000 in the first three months of having it. And there actually have been times even pretty recently that the bonus on this card has been higher than that, sitting at 90,000 points for the same amount of spend. So honestly, by the time I add this one, actually probably in like a few weeks, it'd be really nice to see that bonus come up again. But at the end of the day, I can always get another one under my social security number. So I'm not too worried about it. Also, I've made a few pretty big redemptions lately that I'm excited to share with you all down the line. But the reason I'm adding this one so soon is because I'm really lacking on chase points right now because I just used about all of them. And of course, on the topic of sign up bonuses, if you do want to see, you know, really any cards I talk about in any of my videos, you can always check the links in my description to see the highest public welcome offer at the time of me recording. Just be sure to always do your own research. But if you do use those links, it's a massive way to support the channel at no additional cost to you. So I thank you advance for doing that. The second reason it's in this setup though, is because it earns a flat 1.5 X chase ultimate rewards points back on every single purchase. I tried to emphasize this a little bit and how I just said that, but just note that this is not 1.5% cash back. This is 1.5 X chase ultimate rewards points, which are super valuable and obviously a lot more valuable than cash back if used in the right ways. As y'all well know by now, chase's points are by far my favorite favorite point ecosystem to accumulate a lot of mainly because of their flexibility. Of course, you can get that five plus cent per point redemption through their travel partners, but you can also redeem your points for one cent per point in cashback form, which is, you know, the flat rate for cashback that you should be getting. And then if you want to get crazy with it, you could do something like I did and redeem your points for a MacBook Pro at a 1.25 cent per point redemption rate with the Chase Sapphire preferred. But Obviously, I made a whole video about that if you want to check that out. Of course, I'm not recommending that you actually go do that last method, but it's kind of cool that you actually can do this with Chase's points, which is not something to be said for every lender. Since I'm on team travel, though, my Chase points in general are going to be transferred out to Chase's travel partners. And I'm also not necessarily a big leaguer like Luke's points and miles, for example. So I'm not taking a ton of aspirational trips. And in reality, most all of my Chase points get either used for a Hyatt stay or for a Southwest flight. And just so you know, I do usually get more than two cents per point for my Hyatt book bookings and about 1.4 cents per point for all of my Southwest flight bookings. And you may be thinking, well, how do you do that with this card since it's a business card with no annual fee and can't transfer out the travel partners? Well, of course, that's where the beauty of Chase's ecosystem comes into play. And if I was to add this card right now, I could transfer over all of those points earned on this business card to my personal Chase Sapphire Preferred that I already hold and then transfer those points out to Chase's travel partners. And I just mentioned a couple of times here that this is a business credit card, but you know, I've tried to make this disclaimer in all of my business card videos, but you are likely eligible for a business credit card, even if you don't think that you are. So I'd recommend watching some more videos on that topic if you're interested. But back to the transferability with my Chase Sapphire Preferred, that's great and all, but aren't we supposed to be building out a brand new setup here? With that thought in mind, that leads us perfectly into card number two, which actually might be a very controversial card to be talking about, mainly because a lot of people really hate this card, while a lot of people do really love this card. But card number two is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Adding this card to the setup might beg the question, why would you choose this luxury travel credit card over all the other ones out there? And the fact of the matter is that I think that the Chase Sapphire Reserve actually would spit my spending and my travel habits the best out of any of the luxury travel 
travel credit cards, at least for the general luxury travel credit cards, I should say. The hotel cards, that's a whole different story. I have always said though, that at some point I'd like to add the platinum card to my setup and also the Charles Schwab platinum at some point as well. And I do still plan to do that, if not only just to form opinions on that card for my personal experience that I can share with y'all on my channel. But y'all have also seen all of the changes that Amex recently made to this card and it just seems to keep kind of going downhill. So I don't know. And at the same time, that also kind of goes for the Venture X. I honestly think that the Venture X is great. It's a card that I have, but I definitely see it getting nerfed in the near future because it's just too easy to get value from right now. Honestly, I think that the Chase Sapphire Reserve as well as the US Bank Altitude Reserve are actually the best luxury travel credit cards for the everyday domestic economy traveler. And right now, that's the camp that I fit into the most. On the other hand though, I would say that the Amex Platinum card gives you the highest upside out of any of the luxury travel credit cards. So if you're somebody that's a business traveler or you're just traveling a ton with your family every single year, then the perks on that card are probably gonna outweigh the Chase Sapphire Reserve's perks and you know, that's completely fine. Again, Again, you just got to do what's best for you. One big thing that I do like about the Chase Sapphire Reserve is its airport lounge access. And of course, the Amex Platinum has much more encompassing airport lounge access. But the cool thing about the Chase Sapphire Reserve is that it does come with a Priority Pass Select membership. And while it seems that every single travel credit card has a Priority Pass membership attached to it, the nice thing about the Chase Sapphire Reserve is, at least right now at the time of your recording, they still give you access to the Priority Pass restaurants and spas and stuff like that, which cards like the Venture X or platinum card don't give you. Now I know that this card is not going to be the best in giving me the VIP experiences that other cards could give me. But in my opinion, I would almost say that if you want those luxury experiences, for example, you know, higher hotel statuses and stuff like that, you shouldn't be relying on your general travel credit card to give you that. I would say if you want that high status, especially with a hotel, then you should probably just get the highest tier hotel card you can get with the chain that you like the most. Now I've kind of said a lot here without actually telling you what this card gives you. So let me go ahead and zoom through that real quick while also just, you know, pointing out how I would use each of these benefits personally, because in reality, some of them are going to be trash for me, just like they would be for you. And I want to be honest with that and not just give you a review of each of these cards, but you know, actually tell you how I would use them personally. For starters, this card is a luxury travel credit card if you haven't gotten that by now, but that means it comes with a high annual fee. And in this case, that annual fee is $550. As for what signup bonus you could expect on this card right now, you could get 60,000 Chase Ultimate Rewards points after spending $4,000 on purchases in the first three months of having the card. On Chase's website, they say that these points are worth $900 when used for travel through Chase's travel portal. And we're going to talk about how that's the case here in a second. As for earning categories, this card is going to give you 5x back on all flights booked through Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal, 10x back on hotels and car rentals purchased through Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal, 3x back on dining, 3x back on travel, 10x points on Chase's dining purchases within Chase's Ultimate Rewards Portal, and of course, 1x back on everything else. Now, those are some, you know, pretty decent categories, but that doesn't justify the annual fee, obviously. So what else does this card have? The one main credit that this card's going to give you is a $300 annual travel credit. And that credit is given to you as statement credits whenever you book any kind of travel on your Chase Sapphire Reserve card. It doesn't have to be straight through Chase. And I've heard that this is one of the most lenient travel categories that you could actually, you know, get a credit back for. And if you're not spending more than $300 on travel on this card, then you probably shouldn't get it in the first place. So I think that's a pretty easy one to recoup all the value from. On top of that, it's also going to give you a $100 global entry TSA pre-check or Nexus credit, depending on how you want to use that. And then as for additional benefits this card has, for one, like I mentioned already in detail, it does give you complimentary lounge access to, you know, the priority pass lounges. And one of the biggest perks, the one that I actually wanna hone in on here is the fact that it gives you a 50% boost on all of your points whenever you use your points through Chase's travel portal. Yes, this card also does allow you to transfer your points out to Chase's travel partners, which is huge, but at the same time, we could get that with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So that 50% boost is gonna be what gives us more value than the Chase Sapphire Preferred in theory. So let's talk about that. Like I mentioned before, if I'm somebody that is a domestic economy traveler, just you know trying to book multiple stays, basically for the cheapest possible while still having good experiences, a lot of times you can actually find some pretty good bookings through travel portals. So if you can get a guaranteed 50% boost on all of your travel through Chase's travel portal, that's actually a really big deal. Having a fixed 1.5 cent per point redemption rate for basically all of your travel is really key for those that don't necessarily care to get the absolute most value they can from their points. If you remember what I said earlier, I do usually get more than two cents per point with my Hyatt bookings. So I would still transfer my Chase points out to Hyatt and I would not book that through the portal. But if I'm only getting 1.4 or so cents per point with Southwest flights, then maybe here and there, I want to actually use my Chase points through Chase's travel portal to book a United or maybe an American airline flight or whatever Chase has in their portal. Because in that case, I'm actually gonna get a higher redemption rate, a higher fixed redemption rate, mind you. And I don't really have to think 
think much about the booking or you know trying to find the most optimal price and the time to book i can just take what the chase travel portal gives me of course after making sure that the price in chase's travel portal is not inflated after saying all that of course i'm not ignorant to the fact that this card does really need some updates to it but once again for the right person this card is great just like any other travel credit card out there that you might find value out of that somebody else might not a final note about the chase sapphire reserve is that i did open my chase sapphire preferred in january of 2022 so i could technically get another bonus on this card 48 months after that meaning that i could double dip on this bonus which is a nice perk about chase's cards now of course i'm still somebody that wants to optimize all of my rewards and especially my spending as well so what if i could tell you you could actually double your credit card rewards when shopping online well luckily you can with kudos which is a free browser extension that allows you to earn more while shopping online in reality kudos is just a really easy way to rack up extra rewards that you aren't getting currently but speaking of doubling your rewards one example of this is say you wanted to go book a trip on booking.com if you would have only normally gotten three percent back on your credit card for that purchase with kudos's boost feature you could actually get six percent back on that purchase which is obviously really big but the really cool update to kudos that y'all haven't heard yet is that they just released their maria gpt which is their personalized ai powered assistant that helps you answer just basically all of your credit card related questions if you're ever wondering which credit cards have the highest welcome bonuses right now or maybe what hidden benefits your cards come with maria gpt has the answers for you also i don't think i've mentioned this yet but kudos is a free browser extension which is obviously really nice so if i were you i would stop leaving money on the table and join all the other kudos users who are saving on average over seven $150 a year because of this one extension. Make sure you use code Spencer to get kudos for free by clicking the link down in my description or by typing in joinkudos.com slash Spencer. Once again, make sure you use code Spencer so that they know I sent you. Thank you to kudos for sponsoring this video, but let's get back to my dream credit card setup. Card number three is actually another luxury credit card from Chase, which may kind of shock you because Chase's main luxury credit card is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And before I say it, do y'all have any guesses as to what it might be? Well, if you said the Ritz Carlton card, you'd be correct. I guess Yes, this card is actually a little bit of a two for one because there's actually no way to apply fresh for the Ritz Carlton card anymore. But of course, I'm going to tell you real quick how you can actually get this card despite it being a little bit harder to do so. But first, I do want to shout out my friend Stan the Credit Frog who made an awesome Marriott card video recently. And that video actually sparked the desire in me to get this card. But the strategy to get the Ritz Carlton card involves having a lower tier Marriott card with a $10,000 credit limit on it open for a year. And then you can actually product change that card into the Ritz Carlton card. So there are a couple steps there. You have to keep it open for a year and it has to have a $10,000 credit limit because the Ritz Carlton card is a Visa Infinite. Then all you have to do is call up Chase and you can just product change it to that and then of course pay the higher annual fee and everything like that. But there you go. You have the Ritz Carlton card. But the most optimal approach here is generally going to be getting the Marriott Boundless card first because in reality that card with its small $95 annual fee is going to pack the most punch for the price that it costs. I say that because one it's going to have the best sign up bonus out of the other Chase Marriott cards out there. At least that's generally true. And also, I think it probably would give you a higher starting limit, of course, than like the no annual fee Marriott Bold card. So it at least kind of accelerates that path to getting the Ritz card if you get this one first. As I just noted, the Marriott Boundless does have a $95 annual fee, so just be aware of that. And while this card does come with a free night certificate, you actually don't get that free night certificate until a year after you've had the card open. I'm not going to do a full review of this card, but just know in general, this is probably the way to get started with this Ritz Carlton strategy. And by the way, if you don't get a $10,000 limit right away on your Marriott Boundless, which I imagine most people don't. You can actually either, of course, request a credit limit down the line, or you can shift credit limits from your other Chase cards to this card to kind of top it off and then product change it after that. Okay, now we know how to get it, but why the heck do I want to get it? Well, first of all, there are two kind of negatives to this card. One, it does have a $450 annual fee, so you got to make sure it's worth it for you. And also it doesn't come with a sign up bonus, which means you really got to make sure it's worth it for you. As for the earning categories on this card, it's going to give you 6X back at Marriott Bonvoy Properties, 3X back on dining, car rentals, and airline purchases and 2x back on all other purchases. Those are honestly like decent earning categories, I guess, but Marriott points are usually worth less than a lot of other chains out there. However, one other thing to mention is that with Marriott properties, you won't just get 6x back. You're also gonna get up to another 10x back for being a Marriott Bonvoy member. And then since this card does come with Marriott Gold Elite status, you're gonna get up to an additional 2.5x back on top of that, meaning that for every dollar you spend at a Marriott Bonvoy property, you're getting up to 18 and a half points 
per dollar spent. Okay, we really haven't talked about how you actually get value from this card to offset that annual fee, but of course we're gonna have credits and benefits to help us do that. For one, this card comes with a free night certificate worth up to 85,000 points. And you can also top off that booking with an additional 15,000 Marriott points of your own, making that upper limit 100,000 points for this free night certificate with your points added to it. Now this is gonna give you enough for a free night at some of the best Marriott properties in the world, which is pretty great in and of itself. But this card also comes with a ton of other benefits like a $300 airline incidental fee credit, a $100 TSA pre-check or global entry credit. You get 15 elite night credits towards more status with Marriott, three upgrades to the Ritz Carlton Club every single year. And I know there's even more than that and I could keep going, but in reality, this card is a very, very good card with Marriott. And you may be wondering like, why Marriott? You've never talked about Marriott on your channel before. So why is it such an important card for you to get now? But the fact of the matter is that Marriott has one, if not the largest footprints on the entire world. They have so many different hotels that you can stay at that it's kind of insane. So just having that higher gold elite status with Marriott, along with being able to offset the annual fee with all of the credits that come on it, as well as that free night certificate, this card is going to constantly pay for itself every single year with at least just you know one nice day with Marriott. But if I find myself traveling a lot more frequently, which I expect to be the case very soon, why would I not want a better experience with the most number of hotels? So that's why I think this card actually does make sense for me and why it's part of my dream setup, because also on top of that, it's just a little bit of an elusive card and kind of secret. So I think it's kind of cool in that sense too. I'd be remiss not to mention that you could get the Marriott Brilliant card for even higher status with Marriott, but I'd actually argue that the Ritz card could give you more value than that card would for a lower annual fee. But again, it just depends on what credits you value and you know how you value the rest of the perks that come on the Brilliant compared to the Ritz Carlton. Now, as you might have been able to tell on my channel recently, I've definitely started to really understand the power of hotel credit cards, especially if those cards come with a free night like that massive one we just talked about on the Ritz Carlton card. So now this may shock you, but card number four is actually another hotel card that does give you a free night certificate. And you may be shocked this card wasn't higher on my list with how much I've talked about it recently, but it is the Chase World of Hyatt credit card. I'm assuming at this point, y'all probably understand what this card has to offer, but I still wanna zoom through this real quick and let y'all know what value I would actually get from it. And I also want to address the concerns that people have about this card and why it you know, might be a waste of a 524 slot for a lot of people. First of all, this card does have a $95 annual fee, which is something to take into consideration. And the sign up bonus on this card right now is kind of annoying in my opinion, but what you'll get is 30,000 points after spending $3,000 in the first three months of having it. And then it gives you up to 30,000 more points by raising your base earning rate from 1X on this card to 2X in the first six months of you having this card open up to a total spend amount of $15,000. So in reality, it's really only giving you an extra 15,000 points if you think about it that way. So a little bit misleading there, but also just not, you know, the best offer out there. So I'd love to see this one get raised by the time I actually want to apply for it. The way this card earns is going to be 9x back on Hyatt stays and experiences, including their restaurants and spas. And the way that's broken down is by 4x back on all of those purchases, plus an additional 5x base points back for being a World of Hyatt member. So really this card's only actually giving you 4x back on Hyatt's because you get that 5x points either way if you just had a Hyatt account. On top of that, it gives you 2x back for local transit and commuting, 2x back at restaurants, cafes, and coffee coffee shops, 2x back for flights booked directly with the airlines, and 1x back on everything else. Now the bread and butter of where this card's value comes from is going to be the free night certificate it gives you for a Hyatt stay at a category one through four hotel. Now this is an annual credit, which means that, you know, every single year you're going to be getting one free night, but the catch with it is that it's only up to a category four hotel and those are valued anywhere from like 12,000 to 18,000 Hyatt points on average. I guess on this note real quick, you could actually earn an additional free night if you spent $15,000 or more on this card. For me, that's probably not going to happen, but it is something to keep in mind. But again, a category four hotel is really not super nice with Hyatt. Like it's you know going to be a more budget property. Granted, these budget properties might cost two or $300 in cash, meaning that you're paying a $95 annual fee for a two to $300 room. So of course that makes it worth it. But then again, if you're not somebody that likes to travel in that style, then this card actually might not make sense for you. I had a lengthy discussion about this with Luke from Luke's Points and Miles on one of his recent videos, and we were approaching it from two very different sides. So I thought it was a great conversation, but we did get to a final conclusion that I think is really valuable for everybody to hear. What we decided is that this card is really valuable for those that are taking at least one domestic economy trip per year and staying at a Hyatt property. Of course, that's a category four or lower. However, for somebody like Luke, who is doing more of the aspirational bookings, while that free night certificate would give him positive value, he would almost have to go out of his way to use that because he wants to stay at higher end properties. So while this doesn't make the card a bad card, it just makes it not worth it for him. And that is something that everybody 
needs to kind of evaluate for themselves. Also, if you do have really high spin and you're trying to spin towards status with Hyatt, then this card does actually help a lot, including the World of Hyatt business card. And even though we're not talking about the status hunting game right now with Hyatt, just note that that is another use case for it. Before we get into card number five, I do want to mention that, yes, I did just say that I wanted to get the Ritz Carlton credit card, which is a luxury hotel credit card, but I also want to get this budget Hyatt credit card. So why would I want to do that? In reality, with the Ritz card, I'm looking for just the most coverage I can possibly get, as well as giving me one free night that I can use at a really high end property. And then the Hyatt card is going to be one that I you know, genuinely just use for Hyatt purchases, as well as for that free night certificate that I can use for more budget stays. So I think that there's a good argument to getting a ton of different hotel cards if they give you a free night certificate, as long as you have the understanding of what those free nights actually get you. Whether or not it's worth a 524 slot for you is going to be debatable, but of course, as you can tell, I think it's worth it for me. There is one main type of credit card that we're missing here if you're trying to build out a you know travel focused setup and that of course is going to be an airline credit card now i know i know i don't think that everybody should get airline credit cards i usually don't even think they're very good at all maybe a hot take but i don't think so y'all let me know down below but i would say that there are a couple of gems out there that you could actually get a lot of value from depending again on how you travel which is why for me my card number five is the southwest priority card the southwest priority card is going to come at you with a 149 dollar annual fee which honestly kind of is a lot for an airline card, at least if you're talking about a normal airline credit card and not a luxury one. And the way this card earns is 3x back on Southwest purchases, 2x back on local transit and commuting, including ride shares, 2x points on internet, cable, phone services, and select streaming services, 2x back at Rapid Rewards Hotel and Car Rental Partners, and 1x back on everything else. Now, as for credits and benefits on this card, it does come with actually a pretty decent amount. For one, it's going to give you 7,500 points every account anniversary year just for holding the card. And it's also going to give you a $75 Southwest travel credit every year as well. As for some smaller benefits, it also gives you four upgraded boardings every single year when available. You get a boost of 10,000 companion pass qualifying points every single year for holding it. You also get 1,500 tier qualifying points towards A-list status for every $10,000 spent on this card every single year. Of course, I'm not going to be spending that much money on this card, but just so you know. And you also get 25% back on in-flight purchases. In reality, you're getting positive value from this card because of that $75 Southwest credit, as well as the 7,500 points points you get every single year for holding this card. So that right there is enough for me to honestly personally get this card because I also, as I mentioned earlier, fly Southwest the most domestically. It's kind of the same thing as the Hyatt card, to be honest. I'd get it to solely use for my Southwest purchases, just like I'd use the Hyatt card for my Hyatt purchases. And since it gives me positive value every single year for holding it, it's kind of a no brainer for me. But what I haven't mentioned is the fact that this card plays a very important role in getting you a companion pass for, I guess it's two years if you implement the right strategies. And what that strategy includes is getting another Southwest credit card, generally a business credit card with Southwest. And if you time those applications correctly, you'll actually get Southwest's companion pass for two years just because you applied for both of those cards. So if I'm being honest, I'm not going to add this card until I'm ready to get that companion pass and I won't have to actually spend a ton on these cards to earn enough qualifying points to do so naturally. Once I do implement that strategy, I imagine after a year I would cancel the business Southwest card that I would get, but I would probably leave open this priority card because it does give me positive value. Like I mentioned. This is definitely another one of those cards that may be completely worthless to you. But again, because of my travel habits, it makes a lot of sense. I really urge y'all to have that same mindset when it comes to building out your credit card setups. Just please don't waste money on cards you won't actually get value from just because they're really hyped. This dream setup of mine is one that I plan on implementing in the future. And some of these cards might be popping into my setup a lot sooner than you may think. So to be sure you don't miss those videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're down there, you might as well go ahead and like the video too. And I also want to mention that if you want priority responses to your comments on my channel with actual thoughtful answers, answers to them, of course, you can also consider joining our membership down below too. And if you resonated with that last point I made about not overspending on cards you actually don't need, I think you'd really enjoy this video next where I challenge the hype that the Amex Gold card gets and hopefully help you to reevaluate if that card actually makes sense for you. I apologize if you can't see him, but he did just jump in the pool, so I'm not going to call him up on my lap. But as always, Odin and I both want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll catch you guys next time.